camera manufacturers are coming out with new cameras what feels like pretty much every day, and it's really hard to keep track of them all. There's the a6300, the a6400, the a6500, the a6600, and that's not including the full frame offerings. So how do you know which camera to buy, which camera is the safest investment, and what features each camera has? It's a minefield. So let's just run through them really quickly. Sony a6300, shoots 4K, shoots 120 frames a second in HD, and has blisteringly fast autofocus. It has bad battery life, it overheats, and it's got a record limit. No in-body image stabilization. A6500, shoots 4K, shoots 120 frames a second, does blisteringly fast autofocus, it doesn't overheat, it has got a record limit, and the battery life is still terrible. In terms of form factor, they're identical. A6400, and although it's a newer camera, it's essentially the A6300 with a flippy-uppy screen, and it doesn't overheat. And the A6600, essentially the A6400, but it has got internal image stabilization. It is worth noting that the A6400 and A6600 can do face tracking over HDMI. But essentially, all of these cameras stem from the original A6300, which is a six-year-old camera. Sure, they've got some menu changes and some subtle differences, but essentially you'll be able to get the exact same image out of every single one of those cameras. So what I'm saying is, why not make your new camera an old camera, the Sony A6300? I've been using this very camera for the past five and a half years, and it's never let me down. I've dropped it, I've stood on it, I've bashed it into things, I've never had a corrupted memory card, I've never had it shut down on me, I've never even cracked the screen. They're just little powerhouses. And the A6300 reminds me a lot of the Canon 5D Mark II. If you're familiar with this camera, then it needs no introduction. But for those of you who don't know what it is, it was the first full frame DSLR that could shoot HD video. And the video that it produced was absolutely stunning. It opened the doors to filmmakers and content creators alike, and they even used it in some blockbuster movies just to show how powerful it is. And the reason the A6300 reminds me of the 5D Mark II is because it's kind of an unsung hero. It was the first APS-C mirrorless camera that could shoot 4K, 120 frames HD, and retain that autofocus. You can pick one of these up on eBay with a lens. The lens isn't bad. I made a video about it a couple of weeks ago. I'll put a link in the video description for about 400 pounds. How do I know this? Because I've just bought this one. And that's astonishingly good value for money. You just won't beat that price. Yes, it isn't perfect. The battery life does suck. It does overheat unless you do a firmware update, and I believe that is now solved. And the record limit, yeah, it's there, but you can work around that. As long as your workflow is in place to work around that, you're not gonna have an issue. But if you were gonna go out and spend a thousand pounds on an A6600 and a lens, in a couple of years time, when you come to sell that camera, it's probably gonna be worth five or 600 pounds. Whereas I bought my original A6300 for 500 pounds, and I've just bought another one five years later, for 400 pounds, and in a couple of years time, I'll probably be able to sell either of them for 350 pounds. You just save so much money. And the lenses are cheap, the batteries are cheap, the media is cheap. If you're looking to get into the world of photography or videography, then this could be the perfect solution for you. So let's just run over some of the other features about this camera, which I think make it a great buy, even in 2022. It's got silent shooting, so if you're thinking about getting into the world of wedding photography, then you can be perfectly silent while shooting in the church. It can shoot eight frames a second on continuous mode, which is rapid. You can control the camera with your phone. You can use your phone as a mobile viewfinder, and you can send images from your camera to your phone in a blink of an eye. Really, it is that quick. And by far, my favorite feature about this camera is its size. I'm not gonna bang on about it too much, but if you've watched my channel before, you know I'm all about keeping a smaller camera footprint as I possibly can, and the 6300 really helps. I mean, it's no bigger than the 64, 65, or 66, but it's one reason I really like it. And the autofocus system is the quickest that I've ever used on any camera ever, including the A6400, 500, and 600. I don't know what it is, but when I mount this camera on my gimbal, the magic just happens. With the other cameras, 
I just find myself always a little bit disappointed. So who's this camera for? It would be perfect for a YouTuber. It would be perfect for a streamer because it's got a HDMI out. Also, you can run this camera off of a dummy battery, which is what I do a lot of the time. It would also be perfect if you're thinking about setting up a wedding videography or photography business. You can shoot portraits, pet photography, real estate, maybe not so much because of that prop sensor. Astrophotography. The list goes on and on and on. This camera lends itself so nicely to so many different applications. Essentially, if you're thinking about buying your first camera, then I'd look no further than the A6300 and I'd save yourself a few quid on all the other ones. The only time I'd say it's worth spending an extra bit of money is if you're doing a lot of handheld stuff. Although I find the image stabilization in the A6500 to not be that great anyway. So like I said at the beginning, why not make your new camera an old camera? If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna see another one of my videos, there's a link up there to show you how to stop making shit looking videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again really soon.